Okay. So, so good morning. So we'll start with a recap of uh, last lecture, and uh, uh, the, from there we will uh, proceed to uh, discussing uh, something called a canonical ensemble. We'll see. So, uh, what we saw from last lecture was that uh, so for any isolated system we defined uh, this object omega of E and it could be a function of other parameters so for an ideal gas it could be it could depend on all those other things but we are focusing on the energy here and uh, we defined omega of E as the number of accessible microstates with energy in the range E to E plus delta E, some window. Okay, that's what we did. And uh, so what we saw was that uh, uh, we can identify entropy with uh, the quantity partial derivative no derivatives just thinking of temperature and writing kb times log of omega of okay so this is a remarkable formula because uh, the left hand side is a thermodynamic slash macroscopic object but this right hand side, this is a microscopic thing. You agree? So this is a very remarkable formula which connects something which is a thermodynamic or a macroscopic quantity with something which is like this thing. And so this is truly, this is the Boltzmann formula. And from this we were able to see, so this we are taking as a definition and then we are able to see that uh, partial derivative of S by uh, E is related to, this is equal to KB times D log omega of E by dt using this formula and uh, so then uh, this is the thermodynamic relation so this implies that we can identify t log omega of t e by d e equal to 1 by the temperature Okay, so are there any questions, comments with uh, with regard to this, these ideas which came out and we did this by, you know, we saw that this made sense when because we took uh, isolated system and broke it up into two parts and let them exchange energy and uh, so we said that it will be sharply peaked about some value and uh, at that peak we saw that. Uh, this quantity here on the left hand side was equal on for both systems and uh, now that translates to the thermodynamic statement where if two uh, two things are in uh, thermal contact thermal contact means they, let's, they, they can exchange energy the flow of uh, energy will uh, at equilibrium their temperatures will become equal so this agreed with that statement okay so, are there any comments, remarks at this point?
everything is crystal clear somebody say something <laughs> yes sir yes. okay 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 so now we'll do something different okay <coughs> so we'll again look at our same setup as before a is our system of interest and a prime is the environment okay but we're going to assume we'll assume a few more things now we will assume that a prime is much much larger okay a may be uh, macroscopic it could be even just one single particle it could be anything okay but uh, a prime uh, all we are saying is degrees of freedom of a prime is much much bigger than a further you know all the energies etc etc these are all and a prime so the idea here is that a prime is supposed to be our environment okay slash heat path okay so so it's in contact so our system is in contact with a huge heat path which we'll think of as an infinite uh, you know approximating by an infinite uh, uh, number of uh, degrees of freedom would be ideal okay so that's the kind of setup that we have and what we want to ask now is so the question we're going to ask is what is the probability of finding we asked this question before but we are asking it in a slightly different context <coughs> system a in a particular microstate with energy Say er. R is just some random subscript. Okay, I will really don't want to sum over it. This is what we want to ask. <coughs> so we had written the answer before. We wrote it as P of e R. This is will be proportional to uh, the number of other. Uh, so see, A is the isolated system. So this will just depend on. E star minus E R. We even worked out the uh, prefactors, but that's not important for us right now. But this is what it is. Do you agree with this? Yes, sir. Okay. So, because we are not looking at all uh, microstates with that particular energy E R, we are just looking at one of those. We pick. We are saying a is in that. What is the probability? So we need to work out what this uh, constant is. But what we will do first is that since a prime is much bigger, uh, is it because a prime is bigger that you are giving preference to omega prime in the expression rather than no, omega? no, no, no. I am asking a much more detailed question. Suppose there were uh, with energy the number e r there were hundred states. I'm asking. Uh, I will label them uh, one to hundred. I'm asking. You know which one of them? I mean, I'm asking a particular state in that one in those that thing with that hundred. Okay, so we that, know that omega became one one because I'm picking. Yeah, it would have been omega of e r. But here I am asking something much more detailed, so that will become one because it's exactly one guy which is here in terms of our microstates. Okay. 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 That's all. Good. Good that you asked. Okay. Since a prime is much bigger than uh, a, you know, uh, even if you look at our, uh, I mean, I drew plots where f prime was f one, f one and f two were equal, or f and f prime were equal. 
But if you make f uh, f prime much larger than f, then you will see that it won't be centered in the middle, but it will start, uh, you know, the peak will move where, uh, you know, x is, it will become closer and closer to x equal to 0. So, uh, so to, so e, so what we will see is that the energy e star is mostly in Okay, so what we will do is we will tailor expand, we will take omega prime and as always we will take this, we will take expand log of <coughs> about E star. Okay, so this will become. E star, uh, it's about E star, so then this will just become minus. I'm just doing uh, Taylor series to first order, nothing much. So minus E r times d log d omega prime of E by d e evaluated at E equal to E star. Plus dot dot dot. Okay, so this is just the first order piece in this. Is this expansion clear? Okay, so let's look yes, at sir. yeah. So let's yes, look, sir. yeah good. So let's look at the terms on the right hand side. Of course, there is plus dot dot dot. We're going to ignore them. We're, okay, and so first thing is this term is independent of er so this is just some number okay but this is a guy which is interesting this also is independent of er but is some property of a prime so what should we call this beta beta that is beta or 1 by kbt okay so this is just beta or temperature of the heat bath Okay, so, <coughs> so now we get a nice formula which says log of omega prime of E star minus E r is equal to constant minus beta E r plus dot 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 which we want to ignore. Is this So now we can exponentiate this and so we get or we go back to white color. <coughs> so what we get is a very nice approximation to omega prime which is e power minus beta E R. Okay, so this is the approximation that we want to use. Okay. Now we can go back to our question and write the answer. The answer says that for a quantum state say or a state with energy E R we find now let's just erase this. For a system in thermal contact with a heat reservoir of temperature T, the probability
so yeah so can you once more please argue why p of e are proportion uh, proportional to beta del a uh, yeah i can do that so it comes to start from this formula this is the first formula this you agree with yeah that that right. that yeah. one i okay. i want okay. to ask you. yeah so this is the one yeah this you agree then it follows but if you don't uh, yeah so, so how this formula came P of ER yeah, so, so, yeah, so this formula we had derived a couple of lectures ago and where did it come from? We said that for an isolated system, all states are equally probable. Yes, right? Yes. So, but this is made up of, so the uh, states, uh, so the, so, but A is neither A is isolated, not A prime. So, if, uh, so, but, so then we were, then we are asking that that A is has energy E R, then it follows that A prime has energy E star minus E R. Okay. Sir, there is another term, uh, omega E R. Yeah, omega E R is one because I'm I'm saying that there might be degeneracy, but I'm picking a particular quantum state. So if there are, so if you take a box or something, there are many quantum numbers. I'm specifying all the quantum numbers. So if you take Giving energy would just give you, uh, let's take particle in a cubical box. If you give the energy, then uh, that will uh, that will not uniquely specify the integers n1, n2, n3, right? There might be degeneracy. So what I'm doing is specifying all. So if I said n1 equal to 2, n1 equal, to, uh, you know, if I said n1 equal to 2, n2 equal to 0, and n3 equal to 0, that is a particular state, sorry, 1, 1, sorry, 2, 1, 1, right? That is a particular state. But if you look at it in terms of omega of ER, if you just say that value, that's also degeneracy because there's one, two, one, and there's one, one, two. So you have written three in that case, right? But what I'm saying is I'm asking, uh, I'm specifying, uh, so I'm saying particular microstate, I have to give you more uh, details. I'm giving you more details. I'm saying giving you more quantum numbers. I'm saying that I pick a guy, I'm asking you what is the probability of finding this the the uh, particle say in in the state two one one how many such possibilities are there's only one right so you're given that so then the only way only other possibilities is what can happen in a prime that we have not specified we are not specifying what is happening in a prime so all uh, the degeneracy of a prime for e for its energy being e star minus er is what this term is so it's really one into that so in this in in this case uh, all states are not equally likely right? all no no because i have already i have specified to you i have given you some more information i'm saying that a prime is in that uh, is in that particular state i'm asking for that probability asking a more detailed question you can ask why are we asking such a detailed question but i'm i can in principle okay Okay, so if you take uh, Avogadro number of things, I have to specify 3n numbers, right? I mean, that's a huge number, but it doesn't matter. I will specify all of them. Okay, we will see how to, I mean, we will handle degeneracy in a moment, but this is just for just that part. Okay? Okay. So then this is intermediate calculation. We said that we can approximate omega prime. Okay? So... So now, uh, now uh, the question is, how do we get rid of the proportionality constraint? Any ideas? Normalizing. Yeah. Norms. So we. So th this is a great thing. What has happened is that we can totally forget now. So the good news is. We can forget about. A prime, what did it do? It only fixed the temperature. Because there will be an equilibrium, we know that. That's all it does. And you can forget about it. So that's the good news. And the proportionality, so, and the proportionality constant.
okay <coughs> so now we have to do okay. so so how do we get that so what we want is we want to so what we will do is uh, let me write this so, I will write the proportionality constant as uh, I'll call it Z. Okay, and we now what is the normalization condition? Summation, Summation over, over all PDR. microscopic, all macrosible microscopic. But what is showing up in this sum is only the energy of each micro macrostate. So, yeah. so these accessible microstates need not have just the energy ER, but any energy. No, right? In fact, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, actually, uh, the thing is, uh, all energies. Yeah, yeah. So all energy. So here now, all energies are allowed. Because why is it allowed? Because energy is no longer uh, uh, specified. I mean, so what is happening is interesting here. Why are all energies allowed? This is actually a very important point which this person made. And important because what we have done is we no longer energy can fluctuate because it can exchange energy with A prime. What is constant now is you specifying uh, your thing. There's uh, your trading E for a new different parameter called T, the temperature. Okay, so that's uh, you. You've done that, and so so when I say accessible micro, actually it's like uh, I'll just write all states. You know, why should I even call them? Right, all micro states. So if you take a particle in a three-dimensional box, you have to sum over all possible energies. Of course. If you look at this thing, you will see that high energy states are exponentially suppressed. So, I mean, they will not contribute a lot, but they are there. They are possible. It's possible that they can <coughs> occur. Okay, so we'll see that this Z. So, I can just take Z to the right hand side and flip things around equal to sum over all states. Okay, sum over all states. E power minus beta e of the state so all states means the degenerate as well as the non degenerate states no i will count every st state is uh, once i say state it is uh, i mean the, it's a particular state degeneracy of any state is one but if you give me only energy value so let's do that okay so let, excuse me, so let's address the degeneracy thing, I'll write a different formula and then uh, you will, uh, so let g of e be the degeneracy. Of states at energy E. Okay, then Z will become sum over all energies, energy levels, if you wish, or energies is this clear? These two formulae are the same, by the way. Okay, so if there is degeneracy, there will the G of E will be the same. Does this address the question? What what one means here versus here? The sum is different; they are not the same. One is over states; 
कि अगर इस ओवर एनर्जी नंबर्स और एनर्जी लेवल्स ओके इज दिस क्लियर सर देन इन द अबव फार्मूला वी शुड राइट ऑल माय मैक्रो स्टेट्स नॉट माय माइक्रो नो 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 ऑल माइक्रो स्टेट्स so you have to specify all quantum numbers so if you take particle in a box then you have to take sum over all n1 sum over n1 sum over n2 sum over n3 so let's let's write it out okay particle i mean let a be a particle in a cubical box okay Then, in the last formula it is kind of like something over z will be one second i'll write this and then we can each one goes from 1 to infinity times e power this is what sum over all states is right yes. hmm is this clear what i am saying so here this is one i mean this so this is this formula if you ask me to write the second form of the formula it's too complicated for the exact for the exact uh, energies right because we degeneracy is some weird stuff it keeps changing it's some number theoretic thing such a pain right to ask when are things degenerate etc so because of that we don't need to we need to just do this okay and one more nice thing feature of this thing is that you can see you i can have my system a can be need not be it can be just a single particle it could also be a, i mean we will do ideal gas later but it could be a single particle in touch contact with a heat bath that's perfectly perfectly acceptable are there any more questions because uh, in some sense this uh, uh, this is a very very important formula and uh, so the z symbol comes from a german word named substanzsumme which translates to english as sum over state okay so sir uh, this z calculation started because we wanted to normalize it's just a normalization it's just some boring you might think we might think it's uh, at this point it's just some boring normalization right okay okay is that clear yeah okay and uh, so but we what are n1 and n2 these are the n1 n2 n3 are the quantum numbers the particle in a box you quantize it i'm doing exact formula i'm doing quantum formula so we saw some epsilon not for something by l square or something right a square by some 8l 8ml square times n1 square plus n2 square plus n3 square where these are the quantum numbers which went from 1 to infinity each of them so about g of e will it be like uh, uh, g of ei is it like that it, it g it of the energy value which is sum, sum over the energies use all possible energies it's a degeneracy so you pick a value of energy and ask how many are there with that thing okay for particle in a box it's pretty it's not very easy to write that uh, you know write the degeneracy because it's not a it's not it's a number theoretic number right so number of squares which add up to an integer positive integer number of ways a positive integer can be written as a square so can you write an expression in general for g of e or is no, it no. like the no no there is no there is no closed form formula no i don't think so but you give me something i can do a computation you can do that it's not like i mean no analytic formula is known it doesn't mean it is unknown so i cannot write a single formula you know because it's a it's a funny function which has which is not smooth or anything no yes yeah. so 
that's all but uh, i mean conceptually but you can see here in this case this way of writing is simpler i, I mean all that is taken care of in this thing okay so in english we don't call uh, z as uh, so z as a name Okay, that is one thing. And this is a very, very, very particular setup and we don't have to keep on saying, okay, think of, take this, your system and think of it in being in contact with a, in thermal equilibrium with the reservoir <coughs> at temperature. So this setup, that is, A is in contact with the thermal reservoir. at temperature T is called the canonical ensemble. Okay. And then another definition is when <coughs> A is isolated, we call <coughs> set up as micro canonical okay so so the thing is that uh, <coughs> so if it's in the in the micro canonical ensemble what it what does it mean a is isolated and then we can just say that all uh, all accessible microstates are equally probable blah 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 that setup is when it is micro canonical <coughs> and the setup where we are we are going to uh, treat it in contact with the thermal reservoir we'll call it a canonical ensemble ensemble is because it's a collection we can may think of making copies with diff this thing but in the canonical ensemble the probability of finding if you take a particular thing it is uh, its probability is not it's not everything is not equal it depends on the energy of that thing and uh, and so so there is a de dependence on beta or E or uh, temperature. So that's a different, totally uh, different setup. Okay. So is there any logical reason behind why Z is called partition function? Ah, I don't know. I'm trying to think. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. Okay. It's called the canonical partition function. Yeah. Why? I don't know. <laughs> If you find out, let me know. I'll also try to look up. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So this is kind of uh, uh, a beautiful uh, thing. And uh, there are some more terms which I should. Yeah. So ah, one more thing which I forgot to do. Continuum limit. Okay. By that I mean if uh, when... If energy levels are treated, they are discrete, but if you are, you know. Then G of E This is the density of states. Okay. So what we have done is sum over E, G of E goes over to integral T E rho of E. Okay. <coughs> okay. So and uh, one more just kind of uh, statement. E power minus beta E is called the Boltzmann factor. And uh, 
one by this is the called the Gibbs canonical distribution. Okay, so these are just names, but worth I mean it pays homage to two big giants in this field, Boltzmann as well as uh, Gibbs, who have contributed these basic ideas. It goes back to these people, and uh, so, so, so this is uh, again a good point for me to pause and uh, uh, for questions and comments. Okay, so I guess there are not many questions. So I just want to conclude by making a few remarks. So, you know, it might appear. And yeah, just one more comment. Why is this a Gibbs canonical distribution? It says that if you want to measure some quantity, this tells you what the probability is. So you measure that quantity and you can do the average. So you do the average in the canonical ensemble. And that and the Gibbs distribution function gives you the probability. Is this point clear? No, sir. No, not clear. Okay. No, last point. Last point is that uh, you uh, so. Yeah, let me write that maybe. So what it says is that if you want to compute something, okay, of some average of some quantity. That will be done by computing that quantity. Okay, so I'll write it in the discrete. Okay, sum over all states. You compute that, put that quantity here. The three dots is whatever it is. E power minus beta one by z. E power minus beta. E. That's what it means, right? So example would be suppose we wanted to ask. What is the energy is fluctuating? What is the average energy? Okay, that would be 1 by z sum over states alternate formula is sum over levels Okay. And uh, so this the average energy has, uh, is identified with uh, uh, internal energy or whatever, or U or something in, in thermodynamics. Sir. Yeah, go ahead. Calculate this average energy. Practically, what do we do? We will measure energy at multiple time instant then average it. Yeah, that measurement. Yeah, so you can do it two ways, right? So you could, yeah, you can measure it at, uh, you can do it at different time instants. Yes. Mm -hmm. Or you sum over the ensemble like we are doing. So you don't do in, uh, you might, in experiments, you might do time average. But in this computation, you're doing ensemble average. Yes. Okay. And we are, so, and we are giving, that is why we are giving the statistical ensemble names. So, so whenever we whenever I say microcanonical, if I say canonical ensemble, what it means is that it gives you a prescription to compute quantities, macroscopic quantities by averaging, and each one has a different averaging rule. We know the rules. I'm not saying that we can do calculation always or anything. Nothing like that. Okay. All I'm saying is that uh, this is what we have to do. Okay. So. So I just want to, some, yeah, go ahead. Can you give another example of some quantity that we could average out using this formula? We will, we will be doing things. We will be doing things. Okay. <clears throat> so would, would that formula also include e to the power minus beta e? Yeah, 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 absolutely. It will, it will. So for instance, uh, we will be, we will work out what the pressure of an ideal guy should be. For instance. Okay. Okay. So we'll do those things. We will do those things. We will do those things. Okay. So yeah, so this is just telling you that, uh, you know, yeah, we can, I mean, it doesn't have to be, see the point, yeah, I mean, I wrote E here because it's a simple quantity, okay, but it doesn't have to be 
So we could ask, you know, instead of that, I could have asked for a free particle. I've asked what is the what is the probability of finding the x component of velocity being something? We can ask that also, right, of the particle. And even there, we can do this. So that would be proportional to e to the raised to minus beta v, right? Yeah, yeah. So, 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 yeah. We can actually answer that. So, what is the? Uh, so, let's do that. So, energy of the particle is half m. Okay. So, we are asking what is the probability of finding it with v x, and that should be per with energy v of x, and that should be e power minus beta times energy. But the whole point here is we are not particularly interested in uh, vy and vz, so you have to integrate those things out. So it only only dependence on that would be uh, you know would be beta times half m v x square. The rest of it would be in the integration constant because we have to integrate over dvx, dvy, or sum over n one n two. All those contracts, this one, uh, this thing, right? Or dpx, dby. So this is what you will get, and this is what we already saw was the uh, Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution of velocities. It follows from this. Okay, because specifying vx doesn't give the energy. It there are many possibilities for vy and vz. What I'm saying is we can integrate them out. We are not interested in those things. So finally, you will see that the only dependence comes through this term, and so that's it. And then we can work out the normalization. That's it. Does this help? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I just wanted to point out. Uh, uh, let's look at this. Uh, yeah. So what I wanted to say is that uh, I'll just stop here after I say make the statement. Turns out. That Z contains all the information that we need. Okay. And this is, uh, so Z is not just, it is at first level from a mathematical computation, it's just some boring uh, normalization constant. But we will see that, uh, but Z, uh, the reason is that Z is a non-trivial function of temperature, it's a function of number, it's a function of V, it's a function of, I mean, it's not just some boring thing. So what we will find is taking derivatives of Z with respect to various parameters will give you various interesting, uh, interesting averages, okay. So, uh, so that is the uh, that is the punchline, and uh, so I'll stop here, and uh, and uh, the floor is open for questions. But